Good day, gentlemen. Practice is acknowledging being and being that being. See? When you're practicing acknowledgement to the degree of being the being, see? it's good practice. And then it's a matter of being the light of the body. Being the light of the body, the peace of the body, means being the light of your sitting practice or your connection with the earth. See? See? The grounding, see? reality that the earth represents to each and every one. You know, basically in the form of gravity, but we're really talking about stability. See? We're talking about the mountain presence. See? So we have to remember the mountain presence each, each one of us represents. See, moment to moment, uh, heartbeat to heartbeat, see, brain wave to brain wave, see, breath to breath. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sinking deeper into the practice of just being, being is a very good practice. See? Yeah. And as a result of the stabilization of consciousness, and the clearness that arises from that, see, then you can very easily um, recognize phenomena arising that could be considered uh, relative to mental conditions, including disturbance and including clarity as they arise. So then you start to know because you are in the mountain position, clear, already clear and stable, just sitting basically or standing yeah, in clarity. So anything else that comes up out of the mind or the, the emotions or the body uh, would be seen for what it is. See, more directly and immediately for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And some would say, well then it's just sitting. Well it is appearing to be just sitting, but it's not just sitting, it's just being. See? So you have to be just sitting regardless of what you have to do. Yeah. So that eventually the mind is just sitting, always just sitting, only just sitting, see, peace and clear as a result. Mm. And that itself <coughs> is ready to be applied to any duties you have, any obligations you have, in fact, any decisions you might need to make or in the process of making, <clears throat> everything becomes clear, more direct, simplified, and to the point. Hmm. There's no energy wasted in confusion and going for and against it and over rationalizing it and overthinking it. See, it's just boop, done. So if there's such a thing as the original condition, or original nature, then everything has to be brought back to this, this kind of like beingness. Some say it's pure beingness, some say it's clear beingness, some say it's heart beingness, mindfulness, yeah. being absolutely and only present in the moment, which is training. It appears in the beginning to be a conditional thing you do. After a while, it, the conditionality of it disappeared because there's only the true condition mm. of always here, already gone. Yeah. Mm. Which also means you're ready to be. 
you are ready to be, just be. See, you're ready then to be in the spirit of receptivity to the higher forces of the creative intelligence that everyone is endowed with. Okay? So it's not about waiting for your emotions to get stirred up so you can get sick. No, we're not wait, quite waiting for any more of that in the moment. We are waiting actually for the stillness that is prerequisite. See? Yeah. To receiving higher sense of reality, the light beyond the light, see? the peace beyond the peace, see? and the heart presence beyond heart presence, yeah. see? which is all about practice and receiving empowerment, self-empowerment or heart empowerment, moment to moment, mm. heartbeat to heartbeat, breath to breath, brain wave to brain wave. Last week you talked about um, moving to an entirely different mode of questioning, uh, moving from confusion-based questioning to wisdom-based questions, uh, or at least moving in that direction. Uh, Better to come from it <laughs> than moving in its direction. So we, we don't want to create a, an a gap. Mm. So you work from your wisdom, see. Mm. I'm ready to hear your wisdom. <laughs> mm. 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 That is called practice, putting it into action. Mm. See, not assuming you don't have the wisdom or the wisdom is some other place. No, the wisdom is present. See, see it's present. Not everyone gives you an opportunity to be working from any wisdom. Mm -hmm. See, it's a word that most people don't understand the real context of. Say, so, so what is that, information? Say, mm, could be, but information is not wisdom. So. Mm -hmm. As this wisdom, uh, or at least my experience of it, deepens, and becomes kind of more um, complete, maybe. There are still little pockets of... Um, Human what? What are we going to call it? Human what? <laughs> yeah. Doubt? <laughs> sure, doubt. <laughs> Stuff that would eventually erode, I'm assuming. It dis disappears. Yeah. See? It's cooked off. We have to cook it, yeah. right? You have to cook it away. See, it goes up, it evaporates eventually, but the heat has to be there. See, mm. the heat of understanding has to be there. So when you're here, there may be a little heat of understanding, and so your mind evaporates. See, <laughs> it gets away from you. <laughs> say, Wait a minute, I came in here with questions. Where are they? What, what, what are the questions? I was full of a whole bunch of questions a minute ago, and all of a sudden, I'm here in this sitting opportunity, uh, but, Resting and being and disappeared because the resting and being is real. It's real. It's not magic. We are various states of consciousness. And we are transiting various states of consciousness, moment to moment, situation to situation. And then these situations are colored by uh, emotional content or intensity or emotional um, qualities. See? And these are like smoke, basically, they're passing. Sometimes they are intelligent, let's say, uh, manifestations, where if you feel frightened, you want to know in the moment, like in a split second, you want to know why you feel frightened. It is, a, is it a program from the past? Or is there some imminent danger here, see? And sometimes you're informed by these emotions, see? Like animals, you're informed by the animals. They pick up, they sense things for you. Like they pick up on ghosts and, and strange people, strange beings, um, strange things, phenomena. See, they pick up on that. That's what they're for. They're not just for meat, you know, so you can eat. They're there to give you uh, a certain sense of uh, reality uh, and knowledge through their perceptics. See? And some, uh, some animals see much better than humans. They hear much better than humans. They... Uh, 
can be much more sensitive than uh, music, um, ordinary people, and I was going to say musicians, because um, anybody can be more sensitive than a musician, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually numbed by their distraction relative to music. See? So they can be very busy with music and sleeping to everything else. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea is that there are different levels of perceptions that come up for all of us, and we have to see them, not so much to believe them, but let them pass, and then, as needed, be informed by them and put to rest, let go of, see? Not be preoccupied with stuff that is actually and only passing. When something shows up, um, is, is there a clear marker? It's already gone. It shows up to be gone. So, and in each one's case, they're working with, let's say, a, a condition that we can call a, a karmic, karmic, that means conditional time flow, see, that it is dependent upon conditions. And conditions are dependent upon time, of course. So there's a time for a certain kind of condition to arise, whether it's showing up in the body as hunger or thirst or whatever, desire, see, or intelligence, see, insight or vision or something, see, perception, clairvoyantly speaking, clairaudiently speaking, spiritually speaking, etherically speaking, physically speaking, mentally speaking, emotionally speaking, psychically speaking, musically speaking. Uh, we have perceptions coming in and impulses coming in from all of these, let's say, uh, inputs, influx. Okay. And so when we are at the mercy of certain fluxes, psychologic flux, unless you're grounded properly, you may not know where you are and who you are all the time and what you need to be doing or where you need to be because we're in a mix psychologic mix, and sometimes because we're also different dimensions of time, then we're not sure what of the past is influencing what needs to be of the future, or what of the past or future is mixing in with and confusing, it appears, what you need to be seeing in the moment. Because you're thinking about well, what you need to do, future, and what you've been doing, past. So what, where, what are you doing now? <laughs> So where, where does any of your, say, human nature, flux, give you opportunity to be in the now? When does that happen? If you leave it up to that, it may not happen. <laughs> but if you're practicing nowness and being in the now, being in the being, then you, you have much more, let's say, not so much control over, but much more, let's say, intelligence relative to what it is that's coming in, incoming, right, and what needs to go out, outflowing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because you're not exactly in the mix, you are more or less observing the mix, which is a vantage point, to observe the mix of emotions, the psychological sort of ideas from, let's say, memory, experience, past, present, being mixed, and then whatever the future is demanding of you relative to the rest of the day, let alone tomorrow and the, the week and the months or the year. See, all of these things are either confusables <laughs> or deconfusables, <laughs> see? Uh, is the best way to learn to distinguish between something that's you know, actual useful information well, and something that's... Rest, once you are practicing breathing properly, then you, you can start to sense what it is. So breathing properly implies breathing deeply beyond thinking and feeling, going into the body of light, the light of the body, the stillness and peace of the body, which is perfect. If you're not in pain because of an injury or sickness, disease or whatever, then you should be able to sit like a tree for a moment and from there properly assess what should be influencing your consciousness for better and or for worse 
in the meantime. See? So we need to rest first, rest, sit down, relax, and rest, and just breathe, see? and bring ourselves to peace. See? Peace does not mean suppressing anything. It means you have arrived at a state of consciousness that is perfectly built into your consciousness or your beingness, your human nature, that is like a rest point. But it's not even a rest point. Right? It's the condition of the bones when they are at, at rest. It's the condition of the blood when it is at rest. It's the condition of the body when it is at rest. It's the condition of the brain when it's at rest. The condition of the heart when it's at rest. It's the condition of the stomach when it's at rest. The condition of the lungs when they are at rest. It's the condition of the eyes when they are at rest. The condition of the ears and nostrils, the mouth, and all the rest of the body parts when all together they are at rest, see, and there is restfulness for the moment. That could be in a split second when everything is let go of relative to preoccupation, see, and it can be deepened at the same time. So you go into deep relaxation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You go into just a, an appropriate level of relaxation so that you clear your circuitry to get a, a better sense on what it is you need to bring clarity to. And clarity shows up. Going into, let us say, the original condition of beingness, if there is such a thing, if one could perceive that, the relaxed position, let us say. Then it becomes a, an opportunity to consider what shall you and what can you perceive. What can you hear? What can you see? see? What can you remember and what can you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What can you, if we're talking about uh, a deeper consciousness, what can you know beyond knowing? See? What is there that's known without knowing? See? What is there that's seen without seeing? What is there that is heard without hearing? See? What is there that is felt without feeling? What is there to taste without tasting? What is there to sense without sensing? And in this way we are Calling forth the intuition, see? calling forth the intuitive perceptics to give us a deeper sense of reality. Okay. And in every case, we need to know what stillness and quietness is to a certain degree. See? For the power of relaxation to give us illumination in these areas. So the human consciousness is ready for illumination. See? See? It's hungry, it's thirsty for illumination. Illumination, in terms of more knowledge, perhaps, illumination in terms of just knowing. Not even knowledge, but knowing. Starting to come to know see? for itself. See? We need to know for itself, see? not for ourselves, but for itself knowing for knowing's sake, see? Know to know. See? Can one know to know? Nothing. Just as most beings agree to know to know something about everything. 
short of nothing. <laughs> well, I know about everything. Okay. So we have the capability to know about everything, about everything, concerning everything in the world of information, and not know a single thing about ourselves and, a way, and the way we know anything. Who we know or what we know. Okay. In other words, the preoccupation with knowing something about everything can obstruct the need to know a little nothing about nothingness and the sacredness of such a proposition yeah, along the way. See, to self-realization. Do you know a little bit about nothing? Do you know too much about nothing? <laughs> Is nothing worth knowing about at all? I downloaded the uh, Master Dance Part 7, um, which talks about um, your transition uh, into a, or basically your penetration into mind, concrete mind, you called it. Um, you enrolled in, uh, I think it was, you said Brooklyn College or something like that. And oh, many years back, yes. yeah. 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 Uh, to basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. explore mm -hmm. knowing on an academic or a, that level. Well, yes, yes and no. I mean, uh, I went there to use their fabulous library. <laughs> and so I spent a lot of time in the library, of course, right? in the center of learning. Right. In, in amidst these wonderful texts, see, see. and so yes, that was done. So yes, yeah, mm. yeah. It has it had its place. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What was its place? What is its place? Well, to know about, yeah. not to realize anything, but to know about. That's its place. <laughs> That's what the books are for. To know about. See. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you talked about uh, training the mental body. Training the mental body has nothing to do with a library. So there are two different things. Training the mental body is something you can do on the spot, regardless of where you are. So, so being in, or not being in a library has nothing, nothing to do with that, basically. So it's like being either inside or outside of your, your, your residence. So, so. Uh, being inside or outside of your body. See? See? So we're talking about training. Yes, no, training in my case has gone on. It goes on all the time. See? See? It's always coming back to zero. See? Always coming back to nowness. See? Regardless of what the information was that I was moved to explore back in the day to have a better sense of what people are learning and not learning at the same time. See? So what they were learning is what they were not learning. Mm -hmm. And that was clear to me, whether it was about psychology, then I knew what people were not learning about psychology. By looking at what they were learning, I was able to determine what they weren't learning about it. See? See? And the whole basis, if you can get to that, and I will get to it right now, is coming from spiritualist subculture, see? where it's not about the mind. See? But more importantly, how knowledge affects the mind, how culture affects the mind, and how that can either set you straight or not. Okay. And so the whole idea of, um, let's say, spiritual realization is coming back to the center. So the centerless center of no seeking, in a sense. No confusion, see? no scattering, see? but being center. Being consciousness, see, and working from the inside out, so to speak, so that there is peace. 
an in integration every step of the way. Not so much certainty and security, but just isness, getting back to the is of it all, See? the peace of it, the is, and being, getting back to being, the being, not just the information and the machinery of human nature, which is being confused, <laughs> being overwhelmed by this, that, and everything else in, the, in terms of the world, so to speak. And too many that come this way are definitely overwhelmed. And they want to know how to download that, <laughs> offload it, offload the uh, overwhelmment itself, mm -hmm. see? and start to uh, recreate see, for themselves a uh, basis see, for healing and a basis for he peace, see? Mm -hmm. uh, cultivation. And then from there, a sense of freedom from the neuroses, and then maybe some subsequent happiness along the way. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there a difference between listening with complete attention and completely quieting self noise? Oh, I didn't hear your question. Is there a difference between listening with complete attention and completely quieting self-noise? Is that a question or is that an observation of yours? Uh, it comes about as, a, as an observation, but for me there are still... Mm. Um, well, as long as you're having perception, if you're talking about music, then it's, that's noise. So, now, if the music is coming from a frequency then that is beyond noise, then that can be useful to you, see? But it is, music is music, mm -hmm. see? It's a form of distraction, it's a form of attention, it's a form of, uh, say, culturing. And I, I think that has been my, uh, uh, I guess you might say, my uh, focus when it comes to musicians. And so you're playing music, how is that culturing you besides making you believe you're a better player because you know more about this, that, and whatever, see? That means, how, how does that, how does making you a better player make you free of playing or free of the culturing? Mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. That has a spiritual implication. See? And so uh, that's yeah. what this particular, say, uh, say um, work is primarily concerned about. If concerned about anything, how well do you know what you're doing to yourself? whether it's educating yourself in a way, and what the result of that might be. Mm -hmm. And we're, now we're getting back to what was mentioned earlier, assuming the influx, say, the input coming into the ears, coming into the eyes. What are you putting in your system that's working for you or confusing you? Mm -hmm. So most musicians who are very informed are often just as confused, even though they, know, they can do their music very well whether they're classical musicians or jazz musicians. Doesn't mean they're not confused, it just means they're playing, see? They're playing, but it doesn't mean it's without confusion. Mm -hmm. Or it's, they're playing, but not necessarily without self-confusion. Mm -hmm. They are playing, but not necessarily without other confusion. See? So the whole thing is like uh, uh, egoic rap. <laughs> mm. <laughs> It's a wrap. Yeah. It's a wrap. See? So then it's the stuff that you wrap yourself in that you, you hope to justify and validate yourself on one hand with or by, but on the other hand, that's the obstruction. Hmm. See, that's your friend on one hand, and then it's because it's your friend on one hand, it's the enemy on the other hand. Come in now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, hmm. If you, for example, listening like, I'm listening to you right now, not necessarily music. Um, is the is the uh, process is the action or the is listening to you completely any different than um, quieting myself? That could completely? be the quieting. That could be the greatest quieting for some. Depends on what you're listening to. 
As I said earlier, it depends on the frequency of the, the music. See? And so you can have, you know, a jet band, the, the, what is that, Louisiana jet band, right? Um, uh, and, and it celebrating what it might be celebrating and distracting you in the ways that it will distract you and make you feel what it feels, mm -hmm. right? Because of its nature as a certain kind of jazz band, let's say. And then you can hear the very single strains of a Japanese flute. Representing the wind. At one level of uh, egoic development, you're going to feel peace and comfort with the jazz band, the Dixieland band. See, because that's where you are. <laughs> and then at another level of your egoic development or lack of, you're going to go mm. into this elemental space mm. represented by the long sounds of a flute and the vibrations correspondingly <clears throat> reaching a slowness, see, and a lengthiness, see, like long, slow brain waves and the relaxation that is peculiar to it. Mm -hmm. So it depends on your state, not just the music, or the state of the music, and not just your state. See? That determines how much closer you are to any kind of realization beyond information. Mm -hmm. A realization now we use in a radical sense, where you are self-liberated. Most people have a realization that is about information and only information and they can't get enough information and the reality of what that is in terms of materialization as distinct from spiritualization and the emptying it's more congesting and having to throw up at some point that's what I call the puke side of music <laughs> puke <laughs> <laughs> Most musicians, since you brought up the topic, want nothing to do with enlightenment. They want egoic mint. <laughs> Will this add to my egoic mint? Will it make me look better? Will it make me be more famous and more worshipped in the world of music and entertainment and all of that? That's what I want, see? See, to be the prima donna of the instruments, of course. Right, the best, right? The best, the most applauded, see, the most exalted, the most fabulous, right? Mm. The most endarkened, <laughs> the least enlightened. <laughs> Can you make me the least enlightened and the most worldly and the most loved, beloved, right, musician in the world, please? Right. So go the prayers that, that are sent to the God. <laughs> please, please make me your servant. <laughs> Make me the next Beethoven. You know, wait, throw some Mozart in there, some who else? Oh, Brahms, Brahms, please, Brahms, and oh, Chopin, of course. <laughs> what kind of mix, what kind of stew would it be without Chopin? <laughs> Bach, oh my God, Bach. <laughs> and Bach, too, of course, Bach, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so. Nothing about enlightenment, see? Or like in the jazz, you know, Miles Davis, John Coulter, I want to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger of the instrument. <laughs> Look at my muscles. Look at my lips. <laughs> see? All of this power, see? But no selflessness. They want to be bulging. 
exploding with muscles, but no brains. So, no heart. Make me look good and be bad. So, so. Egoic mint, so, with capital E. Mm, egoic mint. Super egoic mint. So, yeah. Missing the point completely. Thought I'd fell off the pier into the splash. Where's so so? Is it? It's underwater over here. So heavy. Sinking to the bottom. Help pull him up. Get him out of the water. Let him know he even fell into the water and he's drowning. So. <clears throat> That's it. Comment. It can be subtle too, like spiritual. Well, it is. It's, it, we're talking then about self-deception. See, not even knowing what you're doing. See, not even knowing what you're building when you you are so um, immersed in the negative self-consciousness. Of just being a somebody, being a something. It's like the opposite of source. It's like the opposite of the spiritual. Yeah. And the spiritual is the re reverse process. Moving towards nothing and then letting from the nothing the everything come up that. Yeah. The paradox. Mm -hmm. From the emptiness, fullness. No ego. Nothing. It's us, where the unconscious into the superconscious comes up. And when it speaks, you know it's the superconscious. When it does what it does, you know it's the superconscious. You don't know in some cases, but there will be those who know that it's, it's conscious plus, unconscious plus superconscious. Mm -hmm. And it's not about anybody then. See. Mm -hmm. It seems like um, people working towards this have the opportunity to think, oh wow, look at what I'm channeling. Look at how great I am. Get in the way again. Well, as soon as, as, soon as that happens, you're finished. And look at what it is, maybe, could be useful. Uh, well, behold, behold, the light is the light, see, maybe useful, see, but even that is against, against the process, see. Mm. So, uh, it seems like in spiritual circles and, you know, people I'm close to and, and myself included, there's an impulse to um, look for recognition based on some level of spiritual achievement. What's a spiritual achievement? <laughs> what does that mean? See, could it be spiritual achievement if it's called a spiritual achievement? It's a big question. It's almost like contradiction in terms of spiritual achievement. See, there's nothing really quiet about that in, in, in this in sense. See? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it seems like that impulse is very much self-defeating immediately, but it can be insidious also. It can be mm -hmm. um, sneaky. Yeah, I can give you an example of uh, like a musical parallel to that. Hmm. Uh, when I was playing with, you know, some of the important musicians like Rashid Ali and Pharaoh Sanders, there wasn't much talk about anything. It wasn't really a talking thing. Very silent, for the most part. Very silent, you know. It's like, yeah, we did some talking, but the thing itself, uh, in terms of let's say, 
what Rashid would call it, it's like accessing the immortal, okay, or the virgin matter, um, had nothing to do with conversation about yourself, anybody else. Because yeah. if you couldn't play it, everything else is meaningless. If you can play it, it had meaning. Yeah. And uh, Rashid would make a comment here and there, showed you his, his level of depth, actually. Uh, he would say, nobody needs to talk. If you're into the spiritual, I'll hear it. But even you're talking about it, it's not going to impress me. So, I'll hear it. I'll feel it if it's in you. In you, I'll feel it if it's there. Now I'll tell you it's there. So that's, that was his take on it. Hmm. Hmm. In other words, the playing level then transcended conversation and social interaction and all the rest of that. In other words, it, then at that level, the music represented the inner universe. See, not just the outer and the social and the cultural. See, not the skin deep, the soul deep. Not skin deep, but the soul deep. Not the cultural, but the soul. The super soul. Some would say it's the heart, the deep, deep heart. Hmm. Many don't know what that means. Many would say, wait, deep? You mean beneath the floor? Could it be that deep? You mean beyond this room? <laughs> beyond where I am? <laughs> Yeah, so I call this work in terms of Hudaism. See, see, the basic and most fundamental difference between what I'm calling Hudaism and the great classical Buddhism is that the Hudaism includes the jazz experience and the super jazz experience, the spiritual jazz experience. See, which some people would say is not jazz. Well, it's so be it. It's not jazz. It's just creative music. We don't have to call it jazz. It just is what it is. It's a human soul blown out to, towards infinity. Hmm. Yeah. And that's not what classical music teaches you, basically. It's the opposite of classical music. Classical music then is school, first grade. The rest, in terms of cosmic intelligence, is now universal grade. So we're talking about universal grade music, minus the mind, the cultured mind, minus the cultured heart, and its limitation on feelings and assumptions about what should be expressed in music, form or not, which is a lie. There's no limits that should be put on the heart, the human heart, and the human brain. See. It's not worthy of limits. It's already, in essence, beyond limits. See, see, it's touched by the divine in terms of infinite intelligence. See, that's why I say then people have to practice. You know, going deeper because the the deepness that we're capable of is infinite, and nobody knows that because everybody's just afraid to go beyond their face. Hmm. They're afraid to go beyond their body form. They're afraid to go beyond what they've been told and what they've been trained to do. So these musicians, I have no interest in musicians that are interested in their training in the schools they've graduated from. I have no interest in that. That's not a liberation. That's a domination and uh, a bondage. <laughs> well, I've gone to this school and I have degrees from that. You poor soul. <laughs> really? Oh, sorry to hear that. 
Oh my goodness. How could you how could you handle this disaster? <laughs> <laughs> So because the real doesn't come out of the mind of man as such, it comes out of the soul. See? The universal soul itself is what comes out of it. So go back to yogic mysticism. See? See? Where the consciousness is really uh, the thing. See? The heart is really the thing. The spirit is really the thing. And these are inconceivables for most people who are just ordinarily materialized and appropriately socialized to be law-abiding citizens, which is great. This is a starting point. That's, how you, that's where the children begin. You begin with following the rules and so on. And that also applies to music. Follow the rules. And then what? What happens? Then what? You become the slave to the rules? And I'm talking about music. You become the slaves, like uh, others, Many others who call themselves masters from before had to obey the rules. Says who? Who put those rules down on them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the question for artists, not just musicians, but artists. Say, what is your relationship to the infinite, my fellow artist? Say, or musician? Say. <clears throat> No, question. Um, are there, beyond rules, musical rules, um, law hmm. level regulations that you need hmm. to be Well, the universe with? is a universe, it's a body, a cosmic body of laws. So, but what you're talking about at school is not even scratching the surface of what that means. <laughs> Put your finger here, and then put the next finger over here, <laughs> and then put your next finger on the next thing, and you play these notes, right, and then you play them this way, and then we have a piece here from this century, and this is how they played it and suffered and died playing it, just in case you needed to know. And in 2040, this is how they played it and suffered and died playing it. In, t in 2100, 2300, and 3000, this is how they learned to play it, and they suffered and died playing it. <laughs> Until one maybe woke up and realized something deeper than social say, instruction, social, cultural, say, schooling, schooling, training. It's great training, but for what? That's the question. If it doesn't bring you to access the infinite in you, it has failed. It's failed miserably. Just made you a monkey. An employable monkey. At the art of playing a composition, music, jazz, whatever you want to call it. An end in itself. Bah! Done. Toast. Forget about it. Not useful. Already just another casket. There's no God in it, <clears throat> as such. There's nothing there. Come in. Mm -hmm. So then the issue is, can we have access to divine mind, whatever that could be, in our own case? See, are we willing to meet it on its terms? See, that's really a question. Who can? What does that mean to anyone? What access or experience has anyone had with such a thing? Yeah. Has it revealed itself to anyone? And where's the proof? Where's, where is the demonstration of its presence in your case? <clears throat> anyone's case? <laughs> or in no one's case? <laughs> So, I'm not going to say that all musicians just want to have something. They just want to be something musical. But it seems that that's as much as they care for. See? See? 
because as soon as you bring in the word mastery to them, they all want to run home see, and hide behind their mothers. Hello, oh, musician, can you master your sex? Can you master your appetite? Can you master your breathing? Can you master your mind? Because you're doing well with the scales. You're doing well with the musical theory. That's not enough. Because <laughs> if you think for one second, my dear friend musician, that you're going to get up there and go through all your training and hide your f defects, and they're not, you're, it's not going to be coming from you and all your problems and your, your sufferings and all the things you, you haven't mastered yourself, well, you're mistaken. You are psychically incorrect. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, you have no choice but to express that and release that through your music upon the audience. The audience has no idea what <laughs> they're taking home with themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or what's been spewed on them through your, your so-called performance. <laughs> Thinking it was just a performance. No karmic consequence. Wow, it was just wonderful music. What we got was a, this wonderful piece of music. That's it. How much air did you breathe while you were listening to this wonderful piece of music? And what was being transmitted to you through the air molecules? <laughs> What, what did you inherit from, from the psychic or etheric field of that performance? What do you need to work off after that? Whose expressed problems did you take on? Not knowing, not having any consciousness of anything. And just the music, just, ah, what great music. As if there's only music happening when you are around uh, humans. Is the only music happening? Come in now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. That's for real. Mm -hmm. I mean, how conscious can we afford to be? Not as it's musicians. No, musicians. Yeah. As humans. As spirit souls. Yeah. We need to be conscious. Because if we're not, then we suffer unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. What it is to be overwhelmed, see, and victimized by a refusal to know beyond the game, see, of appearing to be something you're not. <clears throat> what is a musician if it's not a human? First. A mess, first. A mess. Just a mess. A human mess, hiding behind a veil of musical training. How do I know? I've been, I've been that in the past. See? I've been amongst that and in that field in the past. See? I know it. I know the people. I know what they want to do, and I know what they don't want to do. I know what they can do, and I know what they can't do, see. Okay. So it's really a matter of understanding human nature, and whether or not anyone is committed to mastering that to a certain degree. So that what you do when you're out there is not just be darkness to peeps in the name of music, beautiful music, see, but be light to other beings in the name of no music, <laughs> in the name of the fire of no music, see? the brilliance of no music, <clears throat> the radiance of no music. <clears throat> so once <clears throat> The so-called musician evolves to the point of, uh, let's say, the uh, point of having been able to play the music of the so-called masters, right, which is school, hello, 
and what they suffered. Right? So it's culture. Maybe when all that's said and done and understood properly is their problem and not your problem, unless you make their problem your problem in musical terms, in musical karmic terms. See? See? Where it is seen clearly psychically where we're talking about musical resolutions and tensions are true to them in their time. Right? And, and that time's karma being true to the person who lived it is in that sound. That sound has its correspondence with their suffering, their misery, and whatever they were trying to get beyond. But that's all there, so you take it on. Yeah. Once you get beyond that, you say, okay, now I've understood music in terms of the, the, the most complex hierarchical structures of musical sound and harmony and melody ever. See? Now, maybe I want to know what the sound of light is. Maybe I want to know what the music of light is. Maybe that has something or maybe more to do with silence and the ultra-harmonic conditions of light mostly imperceivable to humans, but maybe recognizably known as silence, as then the gate to what this universe is. Sil the silence gate to the universe of ultra-harmonic musical perception. So. Let us say. So. When you come to realize that there's nothing you can play then, <clears throat> There's nothing that can be played except knowing it for the reality it already is beyond perception, see? beyond audience, see? beyond audibility. So then it's really the inaudible that we need as the next dimension of human endeavor to get to the inaudible sound itself, the spiritual stream. See? This whole other universe of universes and since we're human, we are capable of knowing that to a certain degree, but not necessarily living it because we are not ready to sacrifice everything we know and do for what it is. <clears throat> See? To have it and know it as a realization in fact, See? or the actualization of what it might be for oneself. Question, Rep? Okay. How does one, um, how does a musician or anybody stay in the flow of that? Well, it's not even a, a thought, actually. So there's no, there's no, there's no one, and there's no flow. It's just a, a, a revelation of potential. So nobody cares about that. And <laughs> everybody, as I stated earlier, cares about themselves. <laughs> so. This is outside of that universe completely. It's not something you're going to jump into simply because you hear the theory of it. <laughs> There's nothing to jump into. It's inconceivable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you, we are part of that, but we have no conscious access to it because we're so preoccupied with everything less than or other than that. So, human. It's what it is to be human. We need to be more than human to access what this is. <clears throat> this is the spiritual domain as it pertains to, as I said, supersonic. <clears throat> Supersonics. I don't mean speed, but hearing. The inaudibles, which are part and parcel of the field or universe of silence, which means it has everything to do with the soul level. It is the super soul. Then from there, if some 
let's say, individuals are able to enter that condition or state <laughs> of the super ultra harmonic condition of silence, let's say, it's theory, of course. Hmm. Hmm. We hope that such beings teach others concerning that and point to that for the few who are willing to become yogis see, themselves, uh, uh, and by that I mean completely dedicated to enlightenment in a sense, not so much from the Buddhist viewpoint, but from the Hudist viewpoint of using the jazz experience as part of their, their, their uh, let's say, unfoldment process. See? See? So it's beyond jazz. Jazz is a step, like classical music is a step for most jazz musicians, for training. And then you have the creative, let's say, um, development after classical training in the form of self-expression. So once you get beyond that, and maybe if you're moving more towards the source of all of that, and we're talking then about the silence and the light silences, see, relative to the inaudibles, the inconceivable inaudibles, then there may be more beings moving in this direction. See, see because of their nature, see? And we're talking then about the spiritual being in all beings, but where is it? Come now, where is it?